This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. I just want to reiterate one more time, both of these decisions are bad. You should not make either of these decisions, but going off of what the game is probably trying to make us do, it probably wants us to pull the plug on Mom. Again, not a good thing to do. But I'm pretty sure that's where the game is taking us. Sorry, Mom. Yeah, Prince Dust, you, you joined in at a terrible part! Holy cow, it's like the one decision we've actually had on this route, and both of the options suck. I don't want to pick either, but I'm pretty sure this leads to the quote-unquote good ending. <laughs> Mom's the source of my suffering. Well, no, nightmares are the source of your suffering. After leaving me with that terrifying final question, she spent years in constant sleep. Little more than a living reminder of that tragedy. At the very least, her death would put an end to the pain, even now racking my body. An end to the fear of her words. That's not gonna help. I fail to see how- well, I, I actually probably can see how this is going to go, but I don't like it. At the very least, her death would put an end to the pain, even now racking my body, and to my fear of her words, and if I want to be liberated from my nightmares, this may be the only means remaining to me. I'm a weak person. And apparently there are no, like... I don't think that she'll like, just be able to literally pull the plug, and then she'll just, like, die like that. I'm pretty sure if she pulls the plug, the nursing staff's gonna get alerted and be like, Whoa there! You do not have the authority to determine that or not. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oof. Oh, Nick. <laughs> that's that Nick right there. That's basically the epitome of black comedy. I I kind of love it though. <laughs> I've been I've been making kind of dark jokes this stream too. I doubt there I'm a weak person. I doubt there's a more selfish coward anywhere on the face of the surf. In order to protect myself from my unendurable guilt, I lied to myself for many years. I made the world simple and tried to erase who I was. But I can't tell myself that lie anymore. I can't betray Yukun, who went so very far to make me realize my mistake. In that case, I've got no choice but to find a new way to run from the past. Namely, killing my mother. Not a good idea. Maybe Mom's suffering in her own right, being kept alive in such a miserable state. See, that's the rationale behind that. And I understand why people think that way, but... I still contend we don't have the right to determine when, when we can justifiably kill somebody who hasn't committed any crime warranting of that. Maybe she'd be happier going up to heaven, where Dad's waiting for her, where she'll never have to see my face again. As soon as the idea crosses my mind, nauseatingly convenient excuses pop up one after the other. I'm a terrible daughter. Even after all the suffering my selfishness caused my parents, all I'm thinking about is how to make life easier for myself. Is there even blood running from my veins? Perhaps it would actually be for the best if I was branded as a criminal and sent off to jail. Yes, a real prison, where I could spend my entire life atoning for my crimes. Whatever people may say, I'm afraid Muhammad's Academy is hardly suitable for the purpose. Do all the students view that school as a prison? If so, that's a problem. The days I spent there were very special to me. Michiru-sama, Maki-chan, Amane-san, Sakaki-san, and Principal Tachibana. Everyone I met there was a truly kind-hearted person. Notice how she didn't mention Yuji- oh wait. <laughs> Everyone I met- and above all else, it was the place where I reunited with Yukun. The place where he made me his girlfriend, where he told me that he loved me. It was all far more than I deserved. This will put an end to all of that, to my unfair, unwarranted happiness. Yeah, I feel like no matter what we picked there, it was going to end badly. Therefore. Therefore. With the same words I always cry when escaping from my nightmares, I reach out and put my hands on my mother's neck. <laughs> Wait, oh, is she not even pulling the plug? Is she going to literally strangle her mo Oh my... Jeez, that got even darker. <laughs> Oh, is she gonna have second thoughts? Yes! Have second thoughts! <laughs>
Okay, that was the stupidest decision. <laughs> Which terrible decision do you pick? Oh, by the way, if you pick this decision, you don't actually do that decision. Really, game? Oh, brother. Yay, Sachi! Way to come around. A-plus voice acting from this girl. As I speak, Mom's face flashes before my eyes again and again. Her slightly embarrassed smile when someone said dinner was delicious. That proud grin when I told her about winning an art contest at school. The excited, happy expression she always had when talking about the work with Dad. And many more, far too many to count. All as clear as day. The faces of the person I loved more than anyone else in the world. And oddly enough, the next word to leave my mouth is the same one that's been tormenting me all this time. Once the floodgates open, the words don't stop. One after the other, the feelings I've kept locked up inside flow uncontrollably out of my mouth. どうしてお前のことが嫌いだってはっきり言ってくれなかったのそう言ってくれれば私にも何かできたかもしれないのになのにどうしてあの日だけは私に優しくしてくれたのあの日もいつもと同じだったら同じ子が起こることもなかっただ
You've got nothing to apologize for, Sachi. You did fine. Why did you tell her to kill, then? As Sachi kneels on the linoleum floor, I move quietly to stand at her side. You... I don't know much about your parents. But I think I have a pretty good idea of just how much you cared about them. When we talked in the park back then, you were always telling me stories about your mom and dad. Even after we reunited in Mahama, you brought up your parents many times. More than you realize, I think. You love them very much, and you still do. That much was obvious. <laughs> you passed the test 100% for real. That's the exact reason why you've been so afraid, why you've suffered so much. That's exactly why you've never been able to shake your guilt over causing that accident. It's the same with the final words your mother left you. You're tortured most of all by the thought that she might have hated you. That your parents might have resented you for what happened to them. So in the end, what you really want to know is your parents' feelings. Am I wrong? In that case, why not find out? Find out exactly what your beloved parents really thought of you. With your own eyes. What if I told you it's possible? Have I ever lied to you before, Saji? Yes! Many, many times! You literally just did when you told her to kill, and then you're like, haha, you didn't kill. Good job. It's like, really? Here's the thing, I don't know what you're going to find. For all I know, you might end up learning something you'll wish you hadn't. You might end up going for life bearing an even heavier burden than before. You might get splatted with a pie that's automatically set to splat the first person who opens the door. Are you prepared to take that risk and learn the truth? Sachi squeezes her eyelids shut, breaking off in mid-sentence. For a long moment, she contemplates the question. And when they snap open again, the anxiety and uncertainty in her eyes have been replaced with firm determination. I see. I could never manage to do the same myself. You really are a hell of a lot tougher than you look, Sachi. Take my arm, Harry. <laughs> I'll show you what you really need to kill. Of course, you, you, you know when I say kill, I meant metaphorically, right? <laughs> what does metaphorically mean? Duck on it. <laughs> That's right. And no matter what answer you find in the place we're going to next, I'll be your ally. You said you believe in me? Well, the feeling's mutual. I know you can do this. And if you find an answer that's too painful for one person to bear, I'll share the burden with you. I'll be there. That's not changing, no matter what. I'll be there. Alright, I'm done. Want to go destroy the culprit behind your nightmares? Hi. Aw, yeah! Sachi's ready for business. Leaving the hospital behind, I set off towards the residential district. Sachi at my side. That's a surprise! You'll find out when we get there. I intentionally give Sachi a pretty pompous non-answer, but she doesn't take the bait. She's probably too concerned with the whereabouts of the truth I promised her to play alone like I, she usually would. In an attempt to slightly ease Sachi's anxiety, I reach out and take her hand in mine. This help a little? I can help Sachi see her mistakes. I can offer her reassurance and, re and affection. But if she's going to be saved outright, that's not enough. Her parents need to step in. As for how they really felt about her, 
Even Sachi, who spent many years with him, doesn't know. So maybe this is a little presumptuous of me. But personally, I don't think any parents loved this much by their daughter could possibly hate her in return. You'd be surprised. As I come to a halt before the small house, Sachi finally allows herself to state the obvious. I wonder if somebody else is living there now. To be more exact, we're heading to the workshop next door. That a fact. All I've heard from Sachi's uncle is that her parents seem to be up to something in the workshop a little before her birthday. But hidden in those words lies the answer Sachi's seeking. I'm pretty firmly convinced of that. Sachi. Her mother's final question. Why? Now that the woman's in a coma, we'll probably never know for sure how she intended to finish that sentence. She's probably asking, why did you run away in the morning? But if a parent who's been planning something for her daughter's birthday wanted to say one thing at the end, I think it might have been something like this. The answer you've been seeking should be waiting in here. If you're ready to face it, open this door. Uh, you go first! <laughs> With those words, I take the aged metal key out of my pocket and un unlock the workshop. It's your decision whether to take that step. You can lock this door and walk away. And no matter what you choose, my feelings aren't going to change. So don't worry about me or anyone else. One way or another, you need to put an end to this with your own two hands. Hi. Nodding with a serious expression on her face, Sachi slowly closes her eyes. There's probably a whole torrent of conflicted feelings swirling around in her head right now. Terror that she'll discover proof her parents resented her. Hope that she'll learn the opposite was true. I can almost see the tug of war between those powerful emotions shaking the small girl's heart. Even so, Sachi's capable of accepting the truth now. Whatever it may be. I absolutely believe that. With that declaration, Sachi opens her eyes and stares firmly at the entrance of the workshop. You sure about that? Sachi. Yeah. As Sachi's hand trembles against the cold iron, I reach out and overlap it with mine. We take two long simultaneous breaths, then push open the heavy door. <laughs> what a doofus! Her voice full of surprise, Sachi slowly advances inside. With every step, her eyes grow wider, full of confusion at the scene before her eyes. They sold them for seven bucks! <laughs> Aww. Aww. That's so nice. The workshop's not entirely empty. One wall is covered with dusty bir birthday party decorations. A carefully arranged flock of photographs and certificates crowd the space, contrasting strongly with the dull gray wall behind. Most eye-catching of all is the large, hand-lettered banner above. Sachi slowly reads the words aloud. September 23rd. Today's your birthday, right? From what I hear, you haven't been to this place even once since the day of that accident. Truth is, after you wrote that letter mentioning me, I had the chance to talk with your uncle over the phone. I asked about your parents' disinterest, and he told me about this place. He didn't know the details, but it seemed as though your parents had been up to something here in the weeks before your birthday. 
He also told me that you had no idea about any of this. To be honest, I was tempted to drag you over right away, but I knew that wasn't going to cut it. As long as you kept hiding from your mother, the person you transformed into... The person you transformed into a symbol of your guilt, you pro couldn't possibly face up to the past in any meaningful way. Unless you were prepared to accept anything, you'd be unable to, you'd be able to interpret whatever you found here as part of your warped narrative. You could have phrased it in a much better way. Yeah. You needed to be a blank slate, so to speak. Given a piece of paper filled to the m uh, margins with thick black letters, you need to erase before you can write something new. No, he didn't. He told you to kill. You really are amazing, Yukun. Your parents are the amazing ones here. As I speak, I run my eyes carefully along the painstakingly decorated wall. Getting all those machines removed without you realizing would have been hard work. And all these decorations are all handmade. It must have taken them days. They must have wanted very badly to surprise you, to make you happy. I didn't want you to kill your mother. Not the woman sleeping in that hospital bed, at least. You then didn't- Don't phrase it that way, you crud butt! That accident was too much for a child to process. Too terrifying. Too painful. Thanks to that overwhelming tragedy, you were imprinted with a hollow, false image. An image of two people who resented you and wanted you to suffer. A hateful illusion you mistook for your parents. That's what you needed to kill. PHRASE IT IN A BETTER WAY! <laughs> in this place, time stopped on that day. Here's the reality. Your real mom and dad's feelings, preserved in amber. Repeating my words absentmindedly, Sachi gently reaches out to touch the decorations on the wall. サチが得意なところは私に似たのかもしれない。父の日のプレゼントにサチが私の絵を描いてくれた。嬉しくて涙が出た。サチはキャッチボールが好きらしい。将来はソフトボールの選手になるかもしれないなんてお父さんと語り
Sachi carefully opens the envelope, takes out the letter she finds inside, and begins to read it out loud. Happy birthday. I hope you're not as old as you look. How convenient. That was a nice effect transitioning from Sachi's voice to Sachi's mom's voice. お仕事が忙しくなって一緒に遊んであげられる時間がなくなってしまったこと。サチの頑張りをそばで見ていてあげることができなかったこと。一人でご飯を食べてもらうことが多くなってしまったこと。そのことを謝らせてください。本当にご
私とお父さんに負けないくらい幸せな家庭を作ってくださいなんてそれはちょっと気が早すぎたかもしれないけれど幸の未来が幸せであるようにずっとずっと笑っていられるようにそれが幸に幸せという名前をつけた私たちの願いです少し長くなってしまったけれど私たちが幸に伝えたかったことはこれで全部です How did they fit that all on one birthday card? そして最後にもう一つだけ愛してるはまだ難しいかもしれないからこの言葉で私たちの子供に生まれてきてくれてありがとうサチ<笑> That was sweet. 私の方こそありがとうサチ has the answer she's been yearning for to find ever since her childhood. I stand quietly at her side as the tears flow in streams down her cheeks. I can't say for sure how it felt to read that letter. That's something only Sachi herself will ever know. But there is one thing I can say with some confidence. She won't be suffering from those nightmares again. Because right now the words spilling from her mouth aren't I'm sorry, but thank you. And while I might just be a completely deluded narcissistic moron, true, I probably am pretty sure that I also know what the next words out of her mouth are going to be. <laughs> oh? And what would that be? Yeah, I think I can do that. Oh my gosh, are we finally done with one of the roots? I can't read what that says. Oh yeah, this is definitely the credits. Wow! Well, that took a lot longer than one of the Clanod roots. Holy cow. Oh my gosh, this is the song that Sachi was singing. We have to see all of the thumbnails, because there's that one thumbnail that if we see, I'm going to have to quit out of the screen. I got my finger ready! <laughs> oh, I remember that part. Aw, oh, that, that, that was a sweet ending. I hated the choice he had to make at the end, especially since what we chose didn't actually come to be. Yeah! Alright, well. Ah, Head pads. Aw. That was my favorite part. The flashback sequence was definitely my favorite part of the story. Because no dirty jokes, just good condensed story. Plus a little Sachi was cute. Little Yuji was also very different. I, I prefer little Yuji to adult Yuji. Oof. Why are they showing the gruesome CG and the happy credits music? <laughs> well, just like I thought, we got the good ending. That was also a cute moment. Just 
spoilers for the Michiru ending theme. Excuse me, I have not gotten that ending yet. Okay, I don't think they're going to show the lewd CG. That's good. That low-key might have been my favorite CG in the game, though. Well, it only took around 70 episodes and, like, 42 hours, but we finished one of the routes in Fruit of Grisea. I'm already saying we're probably not going to be do doing all the routes. I definitely want to do Sachi's route. Right, I just finished Sachi's route. Duh, already. I, I'm going to want to do Michiru's route in the future. Maybe Yumiko's as well? Amine's and Makina's do not interest me at all. So... The only one I'm going to guarantee I'll do in the future is Mitra's Root, but I'm probably going to be taking a break. <laughs> I think I think after this stream today, I'm going to replace Saturday streams of a different game and take a break from playing Grisea, because this, this game is taxing to play on my psyche. There's <laughs> only so much face palming I can do. What I will replace it with remains to be seen. Oh, I also... <laughs> Maybe... I'll... Should I show the bad ending on stream, or should I just do that offline and record that and upload it to YouTube? I don't know how long the bad ending is going to be, and I've already been streaming for three hours at this point, which is generally longer than I, what I stream Grisea for. But I do want to see the bad ending, just so I can get the complete picture of what her route is. That was a nice ending, though. But it's not over! But wait, there's more! Oh no, not extreme sports. They're playing sports ball. Oh, she's visiting her mom now and talking to her. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> Makina is the Luan Louis of the Grisea baseball team. The hospital room is filled with the warm glow of afternoon sunlight. As a gentle breeze blows in through the open window, Sachi chatters on, recounting the recent happenings at Mahama Academy. Unlike before, there's no trace of melancholy in her expression. Of course, that doesn't mean her mother's offering any reply. Even so, her sleeping face looks strangely peaceful. Somehow, it makes me think of a parent affectionately half-listening to her daughter's stories while doing housework. <laughs> The one-sided conversation is interrupted by the arrival of a familiar nurse, who immediately greets the two of us. Thanks, Ryo. Still smiling, Sachi slowly rises from her seat. I follow suit, pushing myself off of my undersized folding chair. As she speaks, Sachi gently squeezes her mother's hand. I have heard, like, talking to comatose patients on a regular basis actually can potentially help. I'm not expecting her mom to make a miraculous recovery or anything, but this is a nice, sweet resolution. Plus, making friends with the nurse is always fun. 
After exchanging polite little nods with the nurse, we quietly leave the hospital room. You really alright with that? Wrapping up the visit so quickly. Sachi seems to have grasped what I'm getting at. <sighs> but her reply is strangely casual in tone. Didn't you have more you wanted to talk about? So why didn't you stay a little longer like the nurse suggested? <laughs> it's not like she has anything else to do. What? Glad I made the list. Guess you've got a point. There's no guilt or bitterness in Sachi's eyes as she speaks those words. They're the shining exam they're the shining eyes of a child talking about a beloved parent. I see. Fine, you've convinced me. <laughs> oh, now that you mention it. Something about reverting to childhood and spending the whole day playing in the park, wasn't it? <laughs> Good! Now we don't have to explain why two high schoolers are playing on the swings. The moment she realizes the playground is empty, Sachi takes off at a gallop, practically floating off the ground with excitement. I've had that feeling before, when you feel really happy and you literally feel like you're floating a couple inches off the ground. It's a great feeling. Today, the two of us are playing in the park where we first met until Sachi's thoroughly satisfied. This is what she chose for her belated birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> How are you keeping a straight face right now? <laughs> As my birthday present to you, I'll accept any one request unconditionally, no matter how spoiled or selfish it may be. That is a very dangerous thing to offer. From the moment I made my offer, Sachi's been e eagerly anticipating this day. I knew this girl never really lost her fundamental love for playing around outside, but it seems all those years of self-denial may have amplified her enthusiasm. Uh, you seriously want to go straight through midnight? In some ways, that might be harder than your average ranger training course. Yeah, that's what I said, but can we try to be a little realistic? Human beings do have their limits. Even as she speaks, Sachi's yanking impatiently on my arm. You're not listening to a word I say, are you? I may be grumbling, but for some mysterious reason, there's a smile on my face. This is how it's been lately. We eat our meals together, we talk about nothing in particular, and we end up laughing. Every once in a while, she pulls me around like this. Hackneyed stuff. The sort of thing I used to read about in cheap love stories. Maybe the happiness I wanted to help Sachi find was something as simple as that. Even after visiting that workshop, neither Sachi nor I believe that we've come to understand everything her mother and father were thinking. The feelings of two parents cut down by an accident in the middle of searching for their distraught child. That's probably something you can't fully understand until you have a family and children of your own. But there's one thing that's clear. The two of them wanted her to find happiness even greater than their own. In a way, that's bittersweet knowledge will be Sachi's punishment from now on. A family, huh? At the rate this relationship is going, the two of us might end up married. Maybe even have children of our own at some point. Kind of bizarre, in a way. I wouldn't have been capable of imagining such a future just a few short months ago, but right now it seems completely natural. Even obvious. And if Sachi feels the same way, I don't think anything could make me happier. Hey, Sachi. I've got a suggestion to make, if you're willing to listen. <laughs> Darn! Yeah, that's, that's not it. What do you think about getting married after we graduate from Mahama? Bruh, isn't she like 15? That's a lot on a girl that young. Man, he's making... The, they've only been dating a few months! Wow! He moves fast. 
Yeah, even if I end up quitting my current job somewhere down the line, I'm confident I'll be able to feed the two of us. And I want you with me for the rest of my life, Sachi. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm doing this properly. I got the engagement ring pop and everything. I guess so. <laughs> I know. I know Yuji, Yuji has two years left in high school, and she's got three. That's... <laughs> I don't want to be pessimistic, but I, a large plurality of high school romances don't end in marriage. <laughs> just, just saying that. Nodding to herself, Sachi slowly closes her eyes. Guess it's decided, then. Dane, we got snubbed! Wow! <laughs> you know what, Yuji, you kind of deserve it. Say, say what? Thrown off balance by this 180 degree reversal from her initial reaction, I do a bit of a double take. That's a cute final thumbnail. Also, are we really still going to do this, Sachi? We're going to lose. The mid-afternoon sun, blazing down as if to insist summer's not over yet, is furrowly outshone by a single dazzling smile. That smile belongs to a girl named Komune Sachi, the only child of two people who treasured her above all else, the daughter of two parents who exchanged their ambitions for one simple truth. And pfft, wish! Wow, I suck at reading today! And today, I'm sure the two of them know that wish has been wholeheartedly inherited. Because the woman I love has found a smile so befitting of the name that her parents gave her. Aww. It's like Forrest Gump, except the feather is his shoe. We are officially done with the root! Oh my gosh! It actually happened! I didn't think this game had an end. But it happened. Wow!